Welcome to the program. Say, don't we enjoy our modern conveniences? Well, for the next two weeks, we're going to consider how these conveniences really are kind of working against us and how they're monitoring us, tracking us, keeping a record of almost everything we do, what we buy, who we know, etc. And it's why the big tech companies, well, they're called masters of the universe. And they will serve a master eventually. That would be the Antichrist. You know, I've had Pastor Billy Crone at one of my events, Understanding the Times 2018, had him on air numbers of times. And we are carrying his DVD set on modern technology. It's in our online store. We'll say more about that as we go into the programming for the next two weeks. Because as I perused, quite frankly, the DVD set is 16 teachings on modern technology and their intrusion into our lives. I know we think that the technology is all good, but honestly, it's got a very, very dark side because it's actually revealing that we have absolutely no place to hide, perhaps other than under the shadow of his wings. Pastor Billy Crone, welcome back to the program. Thank you, Jen. It's always great to be on. You're drawing from a number of passages in the presentation that I viewed, including Daniel 12 and the first few verses there. Obviously, you're drawing on Revelation 13, but let's just start here with the Daniel 12 passage. And you set the stage with your presentation talking about the, well, the increase of travel, the increase of knowledge. Let's just spend a moment here on the increase of travel, which actually can probably be summed up rather quickly, but go ahead. You actually sum it up quite effectively. Yeah, and again, you got to keep in mind the historical context and timing of when Daniel makes this prophecy. Mm -hmm. It says there in Daniel 12, there's two signs to indicate, to use this phrase, that you're in the end of times. And those two signs are that people would be going to and fro, and the context is a global basis, so... People would be traveling on a global basis like never before, and that there would be this increase of knowledge, apparently, around the world like never before. Those two things are not only going on, Jam, but those two things are something that are, by and large, recent developments in the last days. They're a part of our life, so much so that we don't even think about these things as major mega Bible prophecy signs that we're living in the last days. And they are. And again, that first one, the travel. That's all we do today as a society around Mm -hmm. the world. We travel, but we don't put it into play with what the Bible says. Every aspect you can think of of how we currently travel is on a rapid scale. Like, for instance, you take the traveling on land, right? The fastest that man was able to travel for centuries and centuries and never changed was basically horseback, about 30 miles an hour. But you look at us today, and what are we doing? We've gone from the horse to the horseless carriage, i.e. the car, we got a top speed of 30 miles an hour to hundreds of miles an hour, and that's just the amount on land. It's not just the travel in general. It's the means of which and how we travel on land and the fact that that's increasing. The average person today now travels 16,550 miles mm-hmm. per year, and some people it's obviously much more than that. And we could go just about anywhere you want. In fact, they're saying, listen to this, Jim, they're saying it's estimated by – 2035, there will be 1.7 billion cars on the road. And if you do the math, that's about one car for every four people on the planet. And then even recent developments with travel on the land, it's not just we're satisfied with driving our cars anywhere around the world as much as we want, but it's also the cars are being automated. And this is recent developments. This is just in the last few years. And it's not a couple fly-by-night companies. I think the last I checked, there's up to 30 different companies around the world who are pushing to automate the cars. They also want to automate the roads and things of that nature. And, of course, they're pitching it as this incredible utopia where you could just sit back, let the car drive for you, and it's all electronic, and you could take a nap. The point you make very effectively, Pastor Billy Crone, is the increase is exponential. I mean, we can go into space now if we'd like to spend a weekend probably on the moon. We'll probably be able to do that at any time. But I think the point that you're making is we're headed towards a one-world system, and lots of things have to happen before this one-world system can be installed. And the increase of everything, let's focus here on travel, knowledge, etc., that's Daniel 12, the increase is staggering. And you bring that out. You even bring out how communication has been needed to increase. I mean, let's face it, we started out with maybe even writing on rocks, perhaps. You even show how we have advances in money. Folks, this is all to bring about a one-world global system. 
And you're right, Jen. We know where it's leading because the Bible says the big issue where it's headed is towards the seven-year tribulation, the Antichrist. Exactly. And what's he going to establish? He's going to establish, with the help of a guy called the false prophet, a religious cohort, he's going to establish a one-world religion, a one-world government, and a one-world economy. One world means the whole world's going to be under Mm -hmm. this deal. And like you said, back to the travel. Jan, for centuries and centuries, we lived in isolated continents. People didn't travel back and forth. And it's not just the increase, like you said, of travel. It's also in the air. We can fly anywhere we want on the planet. And that's even speeding up. There are certain services today that they basically want to get you from here to Europe within an hour or less. It's crazy. And I'm not making this up. It's all documented. And even on the sea, right, and in space, look at the news. They're saying, man, we're going to go back to the moon. They're coming out in just a couple of years with something called the Moon Express, that mm-hmm. the average Joe, not just an astronaut, can actually take a trip to the moon. But you have to have this increase of travel to break down the continental barriers so that you could at least take that first step of creating a global government and a global economy by being able to be in the same proximity to talk about these things to get people to go along with your plan. But I want to give a little illustration here because you outlined the history of money and the concept of trade because all of this is a part of how things have morphed over the last 5,000 years. The concept of currency ultimately boils down to trade. As far as historians know, the barter economy was the only form of trade until 3000 BCE, when the shekel started being used as the first standard unit of currency. Money as we know it today started to take shape around 600 BCE, when the first national currency was created. Coins were standard in civilizations around the world until the Song Dynasty printed the first paper money. Backed by gold, silver, and silk, paper currency was lighter and more convenient to carry. In the Middle Ages, the concepts of banking and commercialized debt emerged. While lending occurred throughout history, Italian merchants started turning a profit by financing the sea voyages of other traders. In the centuries that followed, the Industrial Revolution allowed people and ideas to move more freely. The movement to money wasn't far behind. Money wires made it faster and easier to send money across the world. Lending took on a new, more convenient form when the Diners Club began issuing credit cards that could be used at multiple locations, unlike the single store cards before them. The advent of the Internet bred digital payments like online wire transfers and e-commerce. And in the last 20 years, our phones have become extensions of our wallets. Even to this day, money continues to evolve. In 2008, anonymous coders released Bitcoin, the first decentralized virtual currency on the Internet. So you can just see there's a progression, and that's what we're going to be covering here for the next two weeks, is the progression of how various things from knowledge to travel to money to eventually morphing into even a cashless system, eventually into a chip, how it's all falling into place. Billy Crone, let me just ask you this. Obviously, how it's all morphed so incredibly fast is absolutely staggering. And you bring out an interesting point here because you say that there's going to have to be an ultimate delivery system for one world. I want to jump to that for just a moment because you feel that that ultimate delivery system is kind of in place now. And let's just talk Amazon for a moment here. And they're even talking about eventually suggesting that they put a chip into every order that they sell, which then can obviously be tracked. Talk to me about that for just a moment. Yeah, the distribution factor is very important, not only communication needs, but also specifically, you mentioned there's a passage, Revelation 11, that talks about the account of the two witnesses. Yes. Now, the two witnesses, again, John's writing this about 2,000 years ago. You got to put yourself in his shoes. It must have seemed, if you're familiar with that passage, that It must have seemed like science fiction to him, if you will. How are these people going to gaze on these two people's bodies, the two witnesses? The Antichrist is allowed to overpower them and kill them. Their bodies are lying there in the streets. How is the whole world, because it says it there, going to gaze on these bodies for three and a half days? But, keep reading, it also says that these people are so excited and are gloating over the death of these two righteous men that they're going to send gifts to each other. And it's all within the context of three and a half days. Well, that's 2,000 years ago when John gets his vision. He's like, well, first of all, how could the whole planet watch two dead bodies on a street? And then how are people going to send gifts to each other on the whole planet within three and a half days? Well, you and I, we don't even sneeze at that. First of all, as far as watching a global event, that's with the global satellite communication technology. We could watch anything anywhere on the planet at any time. 
And that's very important. Folks, that's happened in our lifetime. And this whole topic of modern technology, by the way, is very important, especially for the scoffer. Oh, come on, you Christians. You've been saying Jesus is coming back for all these years. Nothing ever changes. No, not when it comes to modern technology. Technology that's even happening as we speak is coming into play with Bible prophecy passages. You couldn't do this before, but you could do it now. You could watch these bodies all over the planet. But the other aspect, you mentioned Amazon. I don't think it's by chance they've arisen to become the global distribution leader. Because, again, what's the time frame there? You have to get a product, a celebratory gift, to anybody anywhere on the planet within three and a half days. Just like with travel, just like with communication, so it is with distribution. For years and years, it was impossible to get something from one part of the globe to another. But then, sure enough, we eventually went from the Pony Express here to the U.S. Postal Service and then UPS. And, and then we had third day air and second day air and next day air. And we've been conditioned with that. And then here comes along Amazon and they take it to a whole new level. You talk about rapid and easy ability to get a product around the planet in three and a half days. They've blown it away. Amazon, of course, they have for their prime customers. You can not only get your shipping for free, but you can get your product within two days, wherever you basically want. And then Amazon is going even further, and they're getting ready to launch what's called Amazon Prime Air and using drones. Now you can order your, quote, celebratory gift in 30 minutes or less. And then it's not only things, products, it's even food. Amazon's huge on that. Right now they offer a service where you can get food from Amazon in two hours or less. You pay a little bit extra, you can get it in an hour or less. And then speaking of even more recent developments, the delivery service for food – and again, the reason why I bring that up is because, hey, if you're going to celebrate something like, say, the death of two witnesses, you don't just want to send a gift. You want to send like a cake or, hey, let's go get a party tray sandwiches and stuff of that nature. Right now, what are we going on? You've got all kinds of options to send food anywhere. Grubhub, Uber Eats, Eat24, DoorDash, all that stuff. But Amazon is taking it even further. The speed of ordering is going crazy. You can do it with the click of a mouse anywhere on the planet. You could do it with the Amazon app. They also have these things called the Amazon Dash button, if you're not familiar with that. And basically, they'll send you a button. All you got to do is push that button, and it automatically, you don't even use your computer, it will automatically reorder that thing and have it shipped to you. They're also increasing the speed of transaction. And Amazon is now launching, this is all recent developments, they're now launching what's called Amazon Go services. And basically, these are stores that you can go into on the fly, and you don't need cash. Yeah. You can just use your phone. And you literally walk into the store, and you grab whatever you want, and you walk out. It's all automated. It can save time. But I have a theory, Jen, and it goes like this. There's only one problem with that cashless payment system with your phone that Amazon is encouraging people to do. You could lose it, or it could get stolen. And then what are you going to do? You're not able to purchase what you need. Wouldn't it be amazing if you could take that same device, i.e. the phone, that already has a chip in it, Maybe pretty soon for certain Prime customers, you can get an Amazon Prime chip that could be installed into your hand. And with the wave of your hand, now literally with a chip instead of a phone, you can make your purchases. You can be tied into the system. And folks, it sounds like science fiction, but that's exactly where it's headed. You're listening to Understanding the Times Radio. Jan Markell have Pastor Billy Crone on the phone here from Las Vegas. We're carrying one of his DVD sets. This is an eight-DVD set with 16 compelling teachings, and it is on how modern technology is, well, dare I say it's a blessing and a curse. We'll get to the curse part here in just a moment because we're being surveilled just about at all times. One of the things that has to happen to go along with all of this would be, obviously, a cashless society. Ultimately, I want to get to talking about things like the 5G network. What is that all about? How about social media? How about your iPhone? How is that affecting you? Not every day, every minute. What about the predictive angle of technology? Technology is trying to figure out what you're thinking about and what you're going to decide two weeks from now so that they can act before you even think about it. Those are some of the things we're trying to cover in this two-week series, but I want to move to cashless here. Many economists believe the future will be cash free. You're already seeing it from everywhere you go, whether it's your baseball game or to your local deli. Now, Sweden is getting there even faster than anyone else, according to a New York Times report. And 4,000 Swedes, now get this, have microchips implanted in their hands. So they can pay for products with just a wave of their hand. 
Ah, makes the Apple Watch kind of look obsolete. So on top of that, many Swedish companies are asking their employees to get implants to pass through access points and to pay for conveniences. Now the red flags start going up. So for our red flags, we have to turn to legal media analyst Lionel. Lionel, thanks for joining us on this. I know you've got some red flags, and I feel like I'm reading out of the book of Revelation, possibly. So what concerns Absolutely. come to you arise from humans microchipping themselves? This is the mark of the beast. <laughs> this is, listen, no, no, let me, let me tell you something. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm no biblical scholar here, but it's amazing the parallels made. Now listen, let's get down to brass tacks. Would you, st not you, I wish they'd stop with this. They go, we're going cashless. We've been cashless. Where's this cash? Ever buy a house with cash or a car? We've got this. I, I don't even have, I got a couple of bucks. We've been cashless. But that's not the issue. One of these days, these kids, these, I think you call them millennials or oh. something, they're going to take these little tiny RFID, radio frequency identification chips, about the size of a grain of rice. And they're going to be cool, Scotty. Oh, they're going to be waiting in line overnight to get implanted. And they're going to say, look at this. I can go to the drugstore, I can go to a cab. Isn't it great? How cool am I? Look, I've got this little embedded chip. And they'll say, they have medical records. And you're going to do that to grandma and grandpa in case, God forbid, they have some kind of dementia and they're walking off. I mean, after all, we have it in our dogs, right? It's like on star for human beings. But here's the catch. One of these days, God forbid, Scotty, you defy, they, they, they find you guilty of something. And you go before a court, and they say, we're going to sentence you to prison? No. We're going to turn your chip off, and you don't exist. These are some of the clips that are contained in this eight DVD set that you can actually see these clips if you'll watch the program on our YouTube channel. It's under Jan Markell and Olive Tree Ministries. See some incredible things that are inserted into this production. Pastor Billy Crone, cashless, he's right. I don't know where you found this clip. He says, what do you think? This is the mark of the beast? I think he's saying, of course it is. It's been around, really, for a while, the cashless idea. But he's right. We don't buy a house with cash. Yeah, exactly. And again, it's just like all the other things we've mentioned with communication, distribution, mm -hmm. travel, slowly but surely, like a frog in a pot. Right. We've been warmed up to this idea. Why? Because we know where the end game is. It's going to head towards a global system of the Antichrist, that's a one-world government, one-world religion, and a one-world economy, and dare I say, cashless. Now, the reason why we say cashless is because I think that's the common-sense interpretation of Revelation 13 and the mark of the beast. It says that he controls all the buying and selling, and people access it through a mark in their right hand or forehead, i.e. a biometric system, which we're already warmed up to. Obviously, that means it's got to be some sort of electronic payment system because what do you do? The mark is just taping 20 bucks onto the back of your hand and paying for something? No, it's got to be electronic. Well, as he said, and folks, that's what's so wild about those clips. These are secular people. Yes, but exactly. Secular people. Secular say, people. Yeah, and they even admit this is the mark of the beast. Mm -hmm. and, and where's it headed? A horrible society where they're going to say, you do what I say or I'm going to, quote, turn off your chip. That's Revelation 13, written 2,000 years ago. That's right. Even the lost admit that. Again, we've been warmed up to it. And what I liked about what they mentioned is not only basically we're already there as a cashless society, even here in America, you're seeing a whole different trend. You're seeing whole countries now completely converting to cashless, not as an option. It's now your only option. As he mentioned, Sweden right now is 99% cashless. They're literally doing away with cash. So even if you have cash, you're going to be shut out of the system. And other countries are following suit very, very quickly. And then they've developed, you mentioned, Jan, this 5G network. Talk about recent developments in our lifetime. People are thinking, well, what's the big deal about 5G? Why is that a hot topic? Well, let me give you what the 5G network will do. The old 3G network, if you wanted to download a two-hour film, it would take you 26 hours. The new 5G network, 3.6 seconds. And you're thinking, okay, so what? So I got faster download speeds. Mm -mm. What they want to do with this 5G network is not only offer it around the world, but it's going to tie, listen, every person, every product to this global matrix system that we call the Internet. And this new system, the 5G network, finally they have the speeds capable of doing that. The term that they use is called the Internet of Things or IoT. 
And they're pitching it as this wonderful utopia where now with these increased speeds, we can connect your smart home with your smart car to your smart office and your smart watch and your smartphone and your smart appliances. And this thing will be able to constantly monitor you, know you better than you, follow you, track you, order for you. And won't it be great? No. You've provided a really good clip in your DVD set too, really. That is 4G, the mobile network that's used around the world to make calls, send messages and surf the web. Now there are plans for 4G to be replaced by, you guessed it, 5G, a new faster network that has the potential to transform the internet. 5G is a software defined network. It means that while it won't replace cables entirely, it could replace the need for them by largely operating on the cloud instead. This means it will have a hundred times better capacity than 4G, which will dramatically improve internet speeds. For example, to download a two hour film on 3G would take about 26 hours. On 4G, you'd be waiting six minutes. And on 5G, you'll be ready to watch your film in just over three and a half seconds. But it's not just internet capacity that will be upgraded. Response times will also be much faster. The 4G network responds to our commands in just under 50 milliseconds. With 5G, it will take around one millisecond, 400 times faster than a blink of the eye. Smartphone users will enjoy a more streamlined experience. But for a world that is increasingly dependent on the internet just to function, a reduction in time delay is critical. Some experts predict that by 2025, nearly half of all mobile connections in the US will be 5G, a greater percentage than any other country or region. Pastor Billy Crone, after that we're going to have 6 and 7 and then 8G. And is the purpose of all of this simply to micromanage every human being? Oh, absolutely. I mean, let's just deal with the facts. Hey, the governments around the world care so much about the people and their citizens that they just want to ensure that we have faster download speed. Right. <laughs> Look, there's always a method to the madness. Right. The reason why they need to have this kind of sufficient speed is to make sure that they can connect every single product, every single person on the planet all at the same time in a continuous, nonstop monitoring system. They say it's going to lead to a life beyond your wildest dreams. I say, biblically, mm-hmm. it's going to lead to the fulfillment of Revelation 13. Because you put yourself back in that context, how in the world is this guy going to literally control the whole planet, micromanage it, know what people are doing or not doing, control even what they're buying and selling? You not only need to create a global network for people to be tied into, think about it, you have to have the global infrastructure to handle rapid knowledge transfer of these people and products around the world. Guess what? Folks, that system is being launched right now. It's called 5G. And you said something interesting in this DVD set. And folks, I'll tell you more about that in the next half of the programming here. You said whenever you see the word smart, just insert the word big brother. And I think that was a very profound, simple little statement. I just said it's profound yet simple because we've got smartphones, we've got smart TVs, we've got smart refrigerators for that matter. So do we even have to be afraid of our refrigerators? Believe it or not. That's the level of micromanaging that they want to know. That's exactly right. Uh, Just on the outside of the home and out there in the world, they plan on moving this whole system, and they're already doing it, inside the home. They want to dictate every aspect of your life, including, of course, buying and selling. But you are going to be like a cage rat system on a global basis. They'll know everything. They'll know your thoughts, your behaviors, your patterns. They'll even be able to build such huge dossiers on you, and they not will, they already are, by the way. They will know you better than you. They will know when you need something, go back to the smart fridge. That smart fridge Mm -hmm. will order things before you're even out because it knows your patterns of eating. Also, there's actually been some secular people saying, well, wait a second. If they're going to control not just buying and selling but my eating habits, then they could tie this into the medical system, and what if they know what I'm eating, and then that affects whether or not I can have health care, or they're going to demand what kind of food I can and cannot eat based on my health. Folks, that's what this kind of a system is leading to. It's a nightmare global micromanaging system, but it shouldn't shock the Christian, at least the one who studies prophecy. This is exactly what you need for Revelation 13. Exactly. Folks, we're going to continue this. I'm going to take a real short time out here. And when I come back, we have so much to cover yet, because again, I said a few minutes ago, I'm not quite through with the cashless society yet. What about social media? I mean, many of my listeners are on social media. As a matter of fact, we push social media here because it's a great way to keep folks connected to each other. 
You think you're just maybe keeping up on your kids and grandkids and what they're doing? Well, there's another side to that, actually. Your iPhone, well, it's actually listening. Do you know that it might even be watching you? It really is. So we'll get into all of this as we keep moving on here into the next segment and next week as well, because I really want you to be apprised, informed, and to be able to, quite frankly, fight back. More in a moment. Don't go away. They're a part of the global elites. That's the global right. elite think that they're going to come out on top on this scenario. It is the Antichrist scenario. It is Satan's man for the time. They're even going to be duped, I believe, and find out his true colors because he's a liar and the father of all lies, John chapter 8, and he's a murderer. He's been one from the beginning. We don't present programming like we have today to scare you, but to prepare you to deal with our times. We strive to make you watchmen on the wall. If you miss a program, catch it on our website, olivetreeviews.org. That's olivetreeviews.org. We have a visual YouTube where you can see the program on our YouTube channel at Jan Markell and Olive Tree Ministries. You can also listen at your leisure at oneplace.com and also download their mobile app. The program will be sent to your devices Saturday morning. Here's Jan and Pastor Crone. When Brianne Kimmel gets ready to go in the morning, cash is not in the equation. I think the last time I went to an ATM was two years ago. She streamlined her wallet to credit cards only. Cash, she feels, is inconvenient and dangerous. There's a lot of times where I think if I had a lot of cash on me, I'd be a little bit anxious. Between 2000 and 2015, non-cash payments in the U.S. grew by almost 400%. Okay. I haven't really needed cash, to be honest. It's either my credit card or if I'm out with friends, I'll use Venmo. Venmo, the mobile app where people can pay each other on a smartphone, now processes $2 billion a month. This year, Apple added similar payment capabilities in iMessage. These free services are so popular, 30 major banks recently launched a competing product called Zelle. Doing away with paper money has been a big boom for small businesses, too. Chicken pie. Washington's family-run Italian chain, Bazzelli's, has been in business for five decades. But at their newly opened downtown location, they've taken a radical step to remain competitive. No more cash. If you want to buy your lunch here, you'll have to pay with plastic. Welcome back. You know, at one time, our world was totally separated, different continents, etc. Still are different continents, but very, very connected now. We talk about these things in my print and e-newsletter. Why not sign up online or give my office a call and you'll find the product advertised in those items, e and print newsletter that we're talking about this week and next. And that's Pastor Billy Crone's eight DVD set on technology. Pastor Billy Crone, you've titled this set what? Modern Technology. Modern Technology. And that's a part of your series on how the tribulation is rising. So this one is on modern technology. What we've been talking about here for the first half of the program, well, we've tried to hit a lot of topics. Pastor Crone, I want to go back a little bit to this cashless system or cashless concept because I just said all global economies are now connected. At one time, the world was very separated. And then we talked about how things have sort of morphed into everything as travel, communication, distribution system. Everything is morphing faster and faster and faster. In the last 100 to 200 years, now we even have a world bank. We have a world international monetary fund. We have the world trade organization. All of these things, we have universal monetary system is clearly on the way. No coincidence that cash is going away. Yeah, and again, it's a step-by-step -step process. In yes. fact, that's the other aspect that's going on, even with these global trade treaties. What do you think those are all about? They're taking huge sections of the planet and they're combining them all into one. And, of course, ultimately, we talk about specifics. The Bible talks about the Antichrist kingdom, if you will, in the seven-year tribulation. There's going to be a ten-horned kingdom. Some people say that this is talking about ten economic regions around the planet being split up. And these trade treaties, of course, the latest one was TPP, what that Trump yeah. pulled out of. Why did the elites, why did they freak out so much over his decision to pull out of that? Because the global trade treaties are a part of pulling the planet together into one giant economy, step by step. In fact, we also see that aspect in the fact that it's going cashless. Just to give people a quick experiment, it's not just going cashless. We're now starting to see, even in our own country, 
even if you wanted to pay cash, you don't have that option That's anymore. Right. Not only in food restaurants and other places, but I'll give you an easy experiment. I fly all over the place all the time. Guess what? Try paying cash for anything on the airplane anymore. They do not That's accept true. cash. That's true. You're absolutely right. So You're we're right. already there, and it's all being tied. And again, we know where it's headed if you read the Bible. It's headed towards the Antichrist kingdom. You said something that triggered something in my mind. And again, I've seen about 13 of the 16 in this eight DVD set that we're talking about this hour and next week. We're trying to whittle that down into a two-hour discussion. Not easy to do. Something you said triggered in my mind, and that is this. The reason I think that men like Donald Trump, for that matter, Benjamin Netanyahu, even the new head of the UK, he's not new, but the election was rather recently in the UK, Boris Johnson, are rather hated is that they are nationalists and not globalists. One of the things that President Trump has done is he's very anti some of these trade deals. He's talking here with Hillary Clinton. This would be back in 2016. They were having a debate, one of the many debates they had. Let's go back in time here to 2016. That's your husband signed NAFTA, which was one of the worst things that ever happened well, to the manufacturing your industry. That is your you go to New England, you go to Ohio, Pennsylvania, you go anywhere you want, Secretary Clinton, and you will see devastation where manufacturing is down 30, 40, sometimes 50 percent. NAFTA is the worst trade deal maybe ever signed anywhere, but certainly ever signed in this country. And now you want to approve Trans-Pacific Partnership. You were totally in favor of it. Then you heard what I was saying, how bad it is, and you said, I can't win that debate. But you know that if you did win, you would approve that, and that will be almost as bad as NAFTA. Take you to the White House. President Trump uh, this week, his first full week in office, we can now tell you that uh, he has signed a three today, uh, including uh, one that does withdraw the United States from the Trans-Pacific Partnership. This infuriates the globalists. If you're going to have a one-world system, you need these types of trade organizations in place, and that's why he's thrown such a monkey wrench into the globalist plan. Yeah, and I agree with you, Jen. I think that adds the part of the reason why that not just people in our own country, certainly the liberal mindset, but even other countries around the world give horrible press to our president is because he's bucking the global system and the global elitist. And for years, they've pretty much had their way. In fact, even in school, even our own secular school here in America, what have kids growing up, now the millennials, been trained? Don't think about national sovereignty. Certainly don't think about God or Jesus in the Bible. You are a universal citizen. Obama was huge on those kinds of phrases because we need to act locally, but we need to think globally. Our school systems for decades have been training kids growing up that they are global citizens of the future. And the future is we're going to have a one-world government, a one-world religion, one-world economy, and isn't it going to be great? And in fact, the globalists are even taking it to the next step, if you're paying attention to the media, is they're now calling for a universal basic income. We just need to be able to divvy out, control all the buying and selling, and we'll dish out your income. Who do you think right now would be warmed up to that idea? That we need to let the government just socialize everything, give us a universal income, we get free education, free health care. Who am I talking about? We have a political party cheering all of this on. We have some candidates on the left who would love to be in charge of it. Exactly. And again, that tells me who they're in bed with, so to speak. Mm -hmm. They're a part of the global elites. The global elites think that they're going to come out on top on this scenario. It is the Antichrist scenario. It is Satan's man for the time. They're even going to be duped, I believe and find out his true colors, because he's a liar and the father of all lies, John chapter 8, and he's a murderer, and he's been one from the beginning. These people are being duped, but that tells you which side of the fence, Mm -hmm. prophetically, these people are working for, and here comes Trump. Boy, no wonder they're going after him. And look at their antics, Jan, that's in the news. Ever since, even before he got into office, they are going after him with the most obtuse charges, unsubstantiated charges. They're making stuff up every week just to try to take the guy out. Why? Because he is the epitome of trying to put a stop to what they want to accomplish, and they had their way. If Hillary, in my opinion, got in, folks, I don't even where to even begin on that. From a spiritual perspective, this is what I've said from the get-go. I don't work for the Trump campaign. I don't work for the Republicans. I'm just looking at it as a Christian. But I think that Donald Trump's time in office in our own country is a spiritual reprieve. As the church, we need to be responsible with this reprieve and get busy about God's plan, which is living for Jesus and sharing him with as many as we can, because ultimately you are not going to stop 
the seven-year tribulation. It's going to come. So if God's given us a spiritual reprieve, a window, then we need to be responsible with it. Unfortunately, what I'm seeing from even Christians is they're more in love with this economy than they're concerned about living for eternity and taking people with them. Moving on here, and if you just join me, I'm spending this week and next talking to Pastor Billy Crone. You can learn more at his website. You can find a ton of products at getalifemedia.com, getalifemedia.com. We're carrying this eight DVD set on modern technology in my store, olivetreeviews.org, views as in viewpoint, olivetreeviews.org. You can call my office. You can, again, get on our newsletter lists. We'll promote them and offer them in the various newsletters. And again, we have a lot to cover yet. I've sort of thrown out some topics that totally caught my attention. We're going to get here, and hopefully, if not in this segment, certainly starting next week, to exactly how are we being tracked. Some of you are thinking, you know, I don't use a lot of this technology. I do have a cell phone, and that may be the extent to my technology use. So I think I'm safe. No, you're not. We're going to get to that for sure next week if we don't get to it this week. In other words, there's this effort at spying going on that's just absolutely stunning. Billy Crone, you said in one of the presentations that I watched, if you aren't doing your business online, you'll be left behind. And what did you mean by that? I call the Internet the matrix, the yes, matrix system. Because you think about the Internet, which again, by the way, is a recent development in our lifetime. You yes. can't say it's the same old, same old, nothing ever changes. No, no. And I believe that the Internet is going to be all a part of a couple different things that you need to fulfill certain prophecy passages. Certainly the buying and selling, because look at what's going on today. How do the bulk of people do their buying and selling? It's all online. It's through the Internet. And not just buying and selling, how do they take care of their financial situation, pay their bills, manage their finances? It's all online and things of that nature. So that matrix is already built. That matrix also helps fulfill the ability for being able to track and build databases on people because, again, Revelation 13, the Antichrist, the false prophet, not only control the buying and selling, but they also micromanage the planet. And they're going to know what people are doing or saying. And you look at everything that we do online, we are completely dependent on this matrix. We, again, buy and sell online, but we research online. We watch TV online. We communicate online. Just about anything and everything you think of is done online. Now, here's the point. That's your whole livelihood, right? It's all interconnected now to this, what I call the matrix. We call it the Internet. This matrix. Well, guess what? Now you become dependent upon that thing. And that can be used as leverage. So if you don't do what somebody says, they're going to shut you off from the matrix, from the Internet. And guess what? You won't be able to buy and sell. We've never heard that before. Uh But again, even more than that, you're not going to be able to access your bank accounts. You're not going to be able to get access to information. You're not going to be able to do anything. I can't make travel reservations. I can't do anything. I can't connect. I can't communicate. I'm completely shut out of this system. All that is already here, and somebody really could have the ability to shut people out of a global system. We don't call it the the market of beast system or anything of that nature, but we just call it the Internet. I believe it's the hub needed to connect all people around the planet and create a system where you basically are given permission or that's taken away from you. You used the term in your presentation, the cyberazzi. I'd like to play a short clip and come back and then discuss that. They've been called the cyberazzi largely unknown companies that buy and sell personal information on virtually everyone across the country. Data marketing is now a $300 billion industry. They know more about us than, uh, than we know about ourselves, and they can actually predict what we'll do in the future with a high degree of accuracy. There are hundreds of data brokering companies in the U.S. One of the largest is a company called Axiom, based in Little Rock, Arkansas. In case you missed it, this company recorded sales last year of more than $1 billion. This is the first TV interview Axiom's chief executive has ever granted. So we collect data, um, and we use that data about people um, to give them more relevant advertising and help businesses make better decisions about marketing um, to those people. The raw data about individual people is run through complex algorithms, tracking purchasing and lifestyle patterns. Then you're grouped into a life stage cluster. There are about 70 different groupings with names like Savvy Singles and Apple Pie Families. It's all perfectly legal, but pinpointing exactly how it's all done and what they have isn't easy. Do you know 
the numbers to my bank accounts? <laughs> so let me tell you what we know. Um, we collect things like contact information, um, demographics, and your, your preferences on, on things. All these clips are shown in the DVD series on modern technology that we're carrying in our online store, olivetreeviews.org, or if you want to go to getalifemedia.com, you can learn a lot more there as well. Billy Crone, some people would call this perhaps something innocent like what you just heard. That's nothing but, can I say, surveillance capitalism. It's really kind of harmless. All right, so they want to know what our favorite car is or restaurant is, something like that. So what? If it would stay there, which I still personally have a problem with that anyway, I think we've been conditioned to allow a lack of personal privacy as somehow that's okay. I, I disagree. But yeah, let's just go there. Okay, so what? So they know what I like. They know what uh, if I own a dog or a cat or if I like camping or gourmet. That's if right. I read the Bible or other books mm -hmm. or if I go to church services or I don't and how much gas and food, what kind of food, my favorite vacation. And all these things, folks, they know. Again, they use this information. They sell it to third parties who want to sell you stuff. Okay, but the problem is it doesn't stay with them. And this is something That's that we right. thoroughly document. It goes into not only our own government system, it goes into governments around the world to monitor their citizens. Now, the biggest one that at least we're aware of that does it even in our own country is an outfit called the NSA or the National Security Agency. They are storing so much information on us, not just these companies, but they have to build these giant storage facilities, okay, to house it, these data centers. In fact, here outside of Vegas, I think it's about six hours away from us in Utah, they finished the Utah data center. Now, listen to this. That data center, and that's not the only one. There's multiple ones in our country, not to mention other governments around the world. But this data center holds what's called a yottabyte mm -hmm. worth of information. And you go, well, what's a yottabyte? That's the same as 64 trillion iPhones laid end to end, which is so many that it would stretch to the moon and back over 10,000 times. Mm -hmm. That's just how much information they're storing on us, and that's just one data center. And we've already were able to demonstrate, and it's in the news if you look, but most people don't, unfortunately. And they admit that that information is being used to catalog and look for suspects. Now, the problem with that, of course, they say, well, yeah, they should. They should get those criminals or the buzzword terrorists, right? They should be able to do that to find those terrorists. Well, here's the problem, folks. It's called the slippery slope. Well, yeah. Didn't it begin with the Patriot Act some 20 years ago? Yeah, exactly. And the aftermath of 9-11, the so-called Patriot Act, which was not patriotic, by the way, also we saw the birth of what was called Homeland Security, mm -hmm. and which to me I thought was very strange. And that document, I don't know, what, 800, 900 pages, a huge, massive thing. Do you really think that they typed that thing up just two weeks after 9-11? No. My theory is that was on the books for a long time. But anyway, after that, that's what's given them the, quote, legal ability to literally monitor even U.S. citizens on a scale that most U.S. citizens have no clue on. Billy Crone, let's be careful here, and let's clarify right now. We're heading into kind of the last fourth of the program here that we're not trying to be conspiratorial. We're really not. Number one, we're trying to be biblical. And we set the stage by saying that there are various passages, particularly we're kind of zeroing in on Revelation 13, the one world system. And in order to have a global system, certain things have to happen. If the Bible is conspiratorial, then I think we are. But otherwise, you and I aren't trying to be conspiratorial. I'd just like to clarify that. Oh, absolutely. And Jen, that's why, believe you me, it's a lot more work for me on my end in the research. But we provide video clip after video clip mm -hmm. after video clip, all news broadcasts, all legit. It's not from joeschmo.com, if there is such a website, mm. or wackyconspiracyguy.org. This is in the news. So we're just reporting what the news is. So there is no conspiracy. The reason why we bring it up is because I believe it has everything as a sign that we're running out of time, that we're living in the last days, yeah. and it's not a time to be fearful. I'm not afraid of these events. I'm not yeah. afraid of these people, even though they're monitoring me. My goal is to be faithful, not fearful, yeah. to what Jesus Christ has called me to do before he comes and gets me, because I know I'm not going into this time frame called the seven-year tribulation. Amen. No. But in the meantime, I have the privilege as his child to share with people Jesus so they can take the way out of this mess, too. Absolutely. And I appreciate that in your presentation. Again, I believe it's eight DVDs. I appreciate how you emphasize in each one. There's a way to avoid the time. We're talking about what's going to happen during what's known as the tribulation and the great tribulation. 
And Pastor Billy Crone very carefully reminds the audience there's a way to avoid that, and that's to put your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and avoid that terrible time of calamity. Because the Bible says that there's never been a time like it on planet Earth. There never will be anything quite like it. And I think that's a good reminder, Billy, that there is a way out. His name is Jesus. Yeah. Well, again, if you're a Christian, this isn't to scare you. No. It should motivate you yes. because the clock is a ticking, so to speak. Time's running out. So get busy living for Jesus and sharing him. However, I will say this. If you're not a Christian, it should scare you. But it doesn't have to be scary if you would accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior because at that point, you will escape the whole thing to come. I want to go back quickly, and we do need to do it fairly quickly. We've talked about the credit card system. We've talked about the cash less system we've spent some time on. But wouldn't an ideal solution to all of that just be perhaps an implant, some sort of a chip? And you actually cover that in this DVD presentation. It's on modern technology, folks. And in fact, we have a whole study just on that aspect. The first step is to get the whole world interconnected into a global economy, mission accomplished. The second step is it has to get into a cashless form, a system for the mark of the beast, mission basically accomplished. The next step is you got to warm people up to basically a biometric payment system because it's going in the right hand of the forehead. Well, folks, guess what's been around for quite some time? And even for people, you're thinking, well, they're not going to go along with this. I don't think this is by chance. What's one of the biggest trends out there now is you got people putting marks on their bodies. Of course, they call them tattoos. But there's also going into implants, bone implants, ring implants, nose implants, the stud implants. Do you think that whole community is going to object to getting some sort of mark in your body that will enhance your existence and enable you to buy and sell? They're going to line right up. In fact, that will be chump change compared to some of the things that they're doing. But not only that, you see the propaganda is here. Not only is Sweden already taking that next, quote, logical step, they're not only going cashless, they're having microchipping parties. Yes, the chipping parties. I think you showed some of those, and they're having a ball. They have no idea that they're foreshadowing what's going to happen in the tribulation. I think Sweden's become pretty much of a godless country. Oh, much of Europe is now godless. They have no idea. They're having a party, but someday the party will be under the Antichrist. In other words, it will be hell on earth. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I need to add this, though, Jan, because a lot of people say, well, that's Europe. You know, at least here in America, there's no way that we're going to start chipping our. No, it's already happening, folks, even here in America. In fact, If you're paying attention to the propaganda machine, they are encouraging us, even as Americans, to get microchipped as well. That's right. And what they're doing is, and we bring this out, right now there's a call to microchip prisoners. That's one of the big angles they're going in. And again, they start at the end of the spectrum, and they work their way towards the ultimate goal, and that's to get everybody chipped. But let's start off with those bad guys, the prisoners. They deserve to be microchipped. And No, no, no. How about the medical industry? Aren't you glad the government's Mm -hmm. taking control of that thing? We actually share a clip from Dr. Oz, his show. And he is promoting the microchip implant for medical purposes, and he even calls it, quote, the next great thing. And it's like, are you serious? Dr. Oz is promoting microchip implants. Then they say, you need to put it in your Alzheimer's person, loved one, in case they get lost. Just chip them like your dog. You're already used to doing that. Why not do it for them? And by the way, they don't even know anyway, so who cares? Then we document their actually parents are being told, you need to microchip your children in case they get lost like that Alzheimer's patient. And child abduction, that's a big issue. And it is, but man, come on, microchip your kids. And then we demonstrate through Hollywood. Hollywood, of course, working with the elite, is promoting that we've all just got to get microchipped. And we share a clip from Brooke Shields, I kid you not. She's not only for this microchip implant in case her kids get lost, but she's laughing and joking about it and saying, yeah, I want to get a baby Lojack. It's just like, you got to be kidding me. But it's all out there, even in our own country. And not only our own country, Jam, but our own country, we're seeing individuals already getting chipped, and we're seeing it go to the next stage. There's certain businesses in our own country right now that are encouraging people, their employees, to get microchip implants. And not just to open up doors and use the fax machine and things of that nature for security purposes. It's also to pay for your food at the cafeteria. So back to the buying and selling. So this whole marking system is happening even here in the United States. Most people are clueless to it, but we know where it's headed. We don't have to be afraid. We know where it's headed. It's headed towards the Antichrist kingdom, who's going to create a global government, a global religion, a global economy, leading to a cashless system that's tied into with an electronic marking system, and we're seeing that in place. Now, so what's the point for you and I? Not to freak out. All that is, we don't know the day nor the hour, but that's an indicator that, hey, 
That means the seven-year tribulation must be getting close, because the machinery is all here. Mm -hmm. We, as Christians, leave at the rapture prior to the seven-year tribulation, so that means if I'm a Christian, I need to get busy living for Jesus, loving him, sharing him with as many as I can. Or, if I'm not a Christian, I better get saved. I better get saved right now, because it's only through Jesus that you're going to escape this horror that's coming to this planet soon. Mm -hmm. Well said. We're going to continue our discussion next week. We'll do another hour because there's so much more that we could share. We could probably do three, four, five hours on all of this. The series itself is eight DVDs on modern technology. You can find it in my bookstore, olivetreeviews.org, views as in viewpoint. You can call my office, sign up for the newsletters. It'll be offered in the various newsletters we provide. But there's more we want to discuss. And by the way, learn more at getalifemedia.com. That's Pastor Billy Crone's website, Get a Life Media. He's pastor of Sunrise Bible Church in Las Vegas, Sunrise Bible Church, Las Vegas, Nevada. And you may say, you know what, Jan, I'm not on social media. It means absolutely nothing to me. Well, you might want to think twice because social media folks are really one step ahead of you. Again, most of you are carrying an iPhone in your pocket somewhere or purse. That's really nothing but a tracking device. How about your GPS system? Isn't that safe? Well, really, it isn't. How about Google Maps? Isn't that perfectly safe? Um, not really. So there's still a lot we want to get to. I want to say a little bit more in our next program about the NSA. I'm going to play a clip talking about that because, again, it's a massive data gathering outfit. And it's gathering all the information you can possibly imagine on you and me. All of this is to, again, bring about a system that's going to blossom in the tribulation. And when we see it virtually ready to explode right now, then how close are we to that tribulation? Let me go out of the program with a couple of thoughts here. Because we live in such perilous times, some would call them even terrifying times. And I would hope, my listeners, that you wouldn't be calling our times terrifying because they're times of great opportunity. I'm just going to quote the words of the psalmist. I trust in you, O Lord. Our times are in your hands. I want to thank you for listening. We'll talk to you again next week. And pa-